This is the plaintiff, Veronica Chandler. She says the defendant is her younger sister, and she loaned her some money so she could buy some new clothes for her birthday. She also used her credit card without her knowledge, and that is stealing. Her sister told her to just call the credit card company to dispute the charges, but that's illegal. Bottom line, her sister owes her $331.98. And that's exactly what she's suing for today. This is the defendant, Venetia Brown. She says the plaintiff lived in her house rent-free. That's why she's not paying her the money she's suing for today. That's right, her sister was supposed to pay her for rent and never did. She didn't try to collect it, and that makes them even. She's accused of dissing her sister. All parties, please use your right hand. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Williams is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, Ms. Chandler, you're here today suing your little sister, Ms. Brown, for $331.98 that you say she owes you. Back in October of 2019, according to your complaint, you were homeless. Why were you homeless? Because I moved out with my son and I really didn't have anywhere else to go to because I couldn't get an apartment by myself because of my funds. Okay, so um, when you needed to turn to somebody, the person you turned to was Ms. Brown, correct? And you moved in with her for how long? I didn't exactly turn to her. her my uh, daughter set us up together and I went to stay with her and she said that I could stay for a little while and it would be rent free. That was nice, wasn't it? Wasn't it, yeah. Yeah, okay. So then at, uh, on Ms. Brown's birthday, she asks you for what? She asked me to loan her, because I had like a couple hundred dollars that I loaned her prior to, and then I had it again. She gave it back to me, so she asked me for her dinner for her birthday. She said she needed it because if she didn't have it, she wouldn't be able to pay for dinner for her and her husband and her daughter to go and eat that night. So I loaned it to her, and she said she would pay me back that weekend when she got paid again. Okay. Um, and you don't dispute that, right, Ms. Brown? No, I do not dispute that she, uh, that I borrowed $200 from her. All right. So now um, the next thing that happens is you notice that there's credit card activity and you didn't do it. Tell me about that. Well, prior to that, I ordered, a, out, I ordered something from her for like 40 some dollars. And she said, well, the next day I'll pay you back, which I did that for her. And I, she paid me back the next day. Then when I look on my bank statement, there's a couple more charges, which I don't even shop at that place. So I know it wasn't me. And I asked her about it. And she said, well, just call the credit card company and tell them that it wasn't you and, and whatever. And I said, I can't do that because if I do that, they're going to already know I already bought something from there that I have and that would be fraud. So they're not going to do it. Right. But did she admit that she's the one who had charged those things? Yes. All right. Ms. Brown, uh, what's going on? Your sister says that you owe her $200. Plus, you used her credit card, according to her, without her knowledge twice, once on November 28th and once on November 30th for $58.99 and $72.99. What's going on? Okay, so uh, she moved in with me in September of 2019. She lived with me until November of 2019. She was sleeping in her car, and I felt compelled because no one wanted her to move in. No, and she, and not even our mother. And so I felt compelled to ask her, I was like, you know, hey, go ahead, you can move in, you can stay here for a month. And if you're here longer than a month, then you're gonna have to start paying rent. And she was there longer than a month. The whole time that she was there at the house, my, my whole house was, it was just a whole ball of negative energy. She was living in my daughter's room the whole time. She, she's a person that carries a lot of things with her, in a sense, kind of a hoarder, in a sense. My two sons who were living, who, are, who live here with me, they were not happy with her being here. She would harass them. She would be negative towards them. She would be disrespectful to them and be upset if they were Okay, let me ask you a question, though. She's been your sister how long? Like all your life. So you know her. <laughs> So if you know her and you and, and know, you know like, like I could, I, I love my brother, but I don't want to live with him and he doesn't want to live with me. So 
you know, I understand that you were you, you were in a dire situation, Ms. Chandler, and Ms. Brown is the one who took you in. So you have to be on really, really good behavior when you're over there because you're living rent free. Ms. Chandler, were you supposed to start paying rent after a month? No, because I didn't even stay there that long because she went on a trip to New York and she told me I had Ms. to Brown, be out of her house before she left. Ms. Brown, when you say she was supposed to start paying rent if she stayed longer than a month. You never charged her rent, right? Because no. I'm looking at the answer. Your answer to the complaint says, I don't feel I owe her anything. As for the loan, she lived with me for over a month, and we agreed that she would pay me rent, but she never paid me anything. I took her in against my husband's wishes that turned my house upside down. I was going to pay her back at first, but when I thought about it, since she lived rent-free, and never paid me anything, I feel like we're even. Correct. Is that more the flavor of this? So, Correct. Um, right, but here's the thing, you know, I look at the text between the two of you, and here's a text in January. Yeah, yeah, now I want my money, the plaintiff says, $200 cash and then the two amounts from Fashion Nova. Who would have thought you would do me like that? This is theft with the credit card according to the courts. The $200 verbal agreement is valid also through the courts. We can do it that way by the end of this month if I don't have it. And this is dated January 19, so it's substantially after she moves out. B, had I had my money you owe me, I could have been there. You should feel bad, but people like you never do until you get what's coming to you. And then your sister, the defendant, responds, listen, B, I'm going to give you your damn money when I am able to. Until then... Go have several seats in the, I've never even heard this phrase and both of you are using it. Is that like a thing? And I've just missed it all my life. So in January, you're telling her, yeah, you'll get the money when I can. not So I know that it's not that she actually owed you rent. I think it's that you changed your mind about paying her back because you're mad at her. What is it you're really mad at? Because it seems to me that the thing to be really mad at is not that someone is asking you to pay back, money that you clearly borrowed because you're admitting it in January. The thing that you're mad at is that you feel like you were there for her when she was living out of a car and that she's hassling you and over the money and you don't, you're not feeling the gratitude. I think that's what you're mad at. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Because she turned the house upside down, Judge. She, my, she, she, my husband was upset. My kids were upset, and I... But what were they upset, upset about? Was it her attitude, or were they upset that there's just another person among them? No, it was her attitude. She's toxic. And, and, I, right. and I know that. I know that for my sister. But I still insisted on... I still <gasps> felt bad because she was sleeping in her car. And, my, and, and even my, my mom would say, you know, maybe she's going through this for a reason. Maybe you shouldn't intervene. And I intervened and allowed her to come and stay with us. And my children were not happy the whole time that she was here. And okay, we already heard that. that. Let me ask you a question. Where are you living now, Ms. Chandler? I have my own apartment now. Okay, well, good luck there. Uh, here's the thing, Ms. Brown. There are two different issues going on here. One is what is right, um, just kind of morally, spiritually, what would I do? I would never sue the sister who took me out of sleeping in a car and let me live rent free with her. I would just chalk it up to, you know, whatever. And I would think, you know what? I owe her so much more than she owes me. I would never sue you. That's the spiritual kind of moral feeling I have about it. Another is what the law is. The law is very different and it has nothing to do with the spiritual. Sometimes it has to do with the moral. But what it has to do with is, is it a loan or is it a gift? And I know from looking at your text in January that it was absolutely a loan and that your feeling that you shouldn't have to pay it is based on she owes you so much more. So what I have to look at is, does she really owe you so much more? She may you owe, owe you so much more in the heart, in gratitude, but I don't believe there was ever a debt of rent to you. I think the whole time that she was there, she was supposed to be living rent free. She just didn't leave fast enough. So I am going to find that you no, are liable Judge, to your sister, you. and I'm going to rule she... in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of the $331.98. That's my verdict. 
So the judge finds for Ms. Chandler, the plaintiff in this case, Ms. Brown. How do you feel about that? What's your opinion? I think it's a bunch of crock. I mean, I, I respect the judge. However, she was told if she stayed with me more longer than a month, that she was going to have to pay rent. Let me ask you a question. What do you think this is going to do to your relationship, you know, in the future with your sister? Uh, do you think this is, is going to really hurt that relationship? Uh, when she left, I washed my hands of her at that moment because she always calls and needed someone to do something for her. And I have children that deserve my responsibility, not a grown woman. So it's over as far as you're concerned. Let's see how Miss Chandler feels about it, ma'am. You did win the lawsuit, but uh, how do you feel about it now? Was it worth it? Uh, yes, it was. Because um, my sister is not telling the exact truth. And if she would clearly get off those drugs she's on, she'd be better, a better person. Do you think if you were in need, you'd go back to her again for help? No. There's other resources. All right. But I'm well, thank you very much. And that'll bring an end to this sister versus sister dispute. Let's see what the judges think. Here again, another session of After the Verdict. Every now and then, as a judge, you have to render a judgment in favor of a party who is utterly unworthy of the judgment <laughs> in their favor. And you kind of hold your nose and you follow the law and you say, yep, there's, there's your $300, whatever it might be. And I got a sense that that was kind of how you felt when yeah. you rendered this judgment. It's just, it's kind of sad because, you know, the hallway is a, an opportunity to kind of maybe start Make the next peace. step of, pe of healing and right. peace. And right. when I watched sisters um, jab like that, and I, and I could tell that she was hurt, right? right? Couldn't you? Like the plaintiff was hurt that she Definitely. said, you, uh, my, my kids don't like you, basically. Right. And she didn't, there, she didn't and, like hearing that. And is know? there any greater gift that one human being can give to another than to take them into your home when they're, when they're in their car or outdoors? and sleeping from pillar to post, and you say, hey, hey, you know, stay under my roof for a while. Right. Come on. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a lifelong debt. You were pretty insulted about that. Oh, I my could hear God. you huffing and oh puffing. Oh, my <laughs> God. Are you kidding me? Usually, as a judge, you don't see siblings in, in court suing each other, except maybe in probate cases where there's no, an inheritance. No, that's what you don't see, because you <laughs> didn't do small claims. And well, small claims, you yeah. see this so often that you just want to cry. That's a fair point. Yeah. In the larger cases, I would see only no, an occasional would. probate case where, where they're clashing over property or inheritance and who gets what, because it's not explicit in a will. Right. Like that. Right. But or when you see this in a small claims case where you're talking about a smaller sum of money, right. that's where it's really pathetic. It really is. It's yeah. heartbreaking. OK, Keith wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, uh, we've heard about a right to cut a neighbor's limbs uh, from a tree up to the heavens. But what if I cut the roots of my property and kill the tree? Am I responsible? Well, if you cut the roots only to the property line, you don't go beyond your property line, you're allowed to do that. They have a duty to maintain it. And if, it, if the roots come over onto yours, you can cut them there. And if it dies, that's their problem. If you go on to their property, it's your problem. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case inside the courtroom.